Okay, here we go. Day 23 of it. Yeah, day 23 of our one hour workout. I got a lot of studying to do today, so we are just gonna try to get this done and over with. Okay, so the ad booster that I was waiting for came in, but I didn't put it together yet, so, and I'm not unboxing because I don't have time right now. Oop, I might be like a pop smoke. <laughs> I might be showing my address on my delivery. Anybody trying to come get me because I ain't got no money for you. I ain't got nothing but love for you, baby. Okay. Yeah, those deliveries come with your address, but if y'all want to come in my hood to my projects and get nothing, <laughs> and might get robbed yourself, or might get carjacked, don't come around here. Okay, so yesterday, like, it was terrible because I was supposed to be getting into my schoolwork and it took me forever to get started concentrating. So I'm kind of backed up. If anybody been watching me, I'm, I'm studying for my mortgage brokers, um, the mortgage loan originators. Um, I'm doing the online school, the 20 hours that you got to do. And then I got to do the test. All my work is supposed to be done by Thursday, so I only got two more days, you know. I got today, tomorrow, and then Thursday I'm supposed to be testing. So we're just going to try to do the best that we can, you know, while I'm in school because I'm, I'm extra tired. I'm not 100% myself, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but regardless of what you have to do, the uh, one hour workout is important and keep watching your diet and keep, you know, doing a little something exercise for one hour a day. That's the only thing that I'm trying to say, you know what I'm saying? So I'm recording mine. So once my um weight come down, y'all won't think it's a gimmick. So let's get down on the floor. Something to kind of scratch it out. Mm. Uh. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm just trying to see because. So we got to aim this camera down to the, to the floor. Let's see. This thing is kind of loose. But, yeah. All right, so let me try to get down on this floor. <coughs> First thing I try to do is some... Um, push-ups. I would love to be able to do some push-ups the real way, but I, I try to do as much planking as I could.
Yeah, it's hard. And my butt be all in the camera. <laughs> my fat behind be all in the camera, but okay. Whatever. Okay, so like I said, who's ever here for a week workout like they some gymnastic person or some highly athletic person. This is not for you. You could like, subscribe, comment, give us some advice, donate, sponsor, sponsor this war on obesity. <clears throat> but this is for the rest of us that just kind of like need to, you know, get started getting out the bed, you know, start stretching your body. I don't know, when I do this, it feels good. Look like a, a spider or something. Or some kind of... Uh. Ooh. So, like I said, I'm waiting for equipment. The, the booster came. The Air Booster Plus. It's still in the box, but I got too much schoolwork to do right now. I might not be able to put it together until, um, whatchamacallit, either Thursday or Friday. And then I'm waiting for another resistant band because this one popped because I went, I was going hard on it. But we're gonna, um, we're gonna use it to its last string. <laughs> We're gonna use it to its last string and then maybe my, I don't know what's going on with this mail. Like that, at, that ad booster supposed to came last night and I was waiting all day and all night for UPS. You know how you anticipate in the package? And I was waiting all day and all night for it, for me to come back to my computer and look at my email and for them to change the date from the 11th to the 12th. At the, you know, after nine o'clock. So they, they really threw me off with my studies. They really threw me off with my studies because, whatchamacallit, I was supposed to be studying all day yesterday. So I started studying um, after, <laughs> afterwards. I don't know, I just couldn't start focusing. So I broke night studying. And then early this morning, I got like two hours sleep and woke back up at eight o'clock. <sighs> okay, so. <clears throat> so I got double the work to do today. So once I finish with this video, I gotta fin complete what I was supposed to complete yesterday and do today's work too. Yeah, all that stuff is a lot. A lot of information for, you know, seven days of, seven days of, you know, of work, you know. I got to learn the whole thing in seven days, you know. And then take a test. Ah. I got my scarf on my head. This does not resemble any gang activity or no bloods or anything like that. It's just because my hair be a mess. You know, my little raggedy ponytail up there, so. And then my head be hitting the floor, so. I guess to prevent dirt particles and stuff while I'm on the floor. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and get this out the way. It's around 12 o'clock. <clears throat> I get this out the way. And then hopefully I don't be too tired and I could just study all day and all night tonight and catch up to everything I got to do. <clears throat> and then next week we should have our air booster put together. Our new resistant band should have came and we're going to be ready to really get serious. Because y'all thought I was being serious now, but no, this is just, 
the first couple of weeks preparation <laughs> to some more vigorous workout. Whoa. But do what you can. <clears throat> Don't overexert yourself because the idea is to, to get up and do a little something every day, you know? And at the same time, watch your diet. <clears throat> you know, the diet is the most important part because if you exercise and eat like crazy, <laughs> it's not going to work. So the diet part is the part that, you know, is going to show the discipline, you know, that's going to, you know, resemble. And then the workout, you know, is going to complement everything and tone you up and stuff, you know. But the diet is going to show a drop in, you know, your weight. Take it easy and do as much as you can. <clears throat> Don't overdo it. We're not competing with nobody. <clears throat> we just basically want to stay consistent every day, you know. We up here doing one hour, you know. <clears throat> Even if you do eat and cheat and you haven't controlled your diet, they still incorporate one hour a day to a workout. And eventually, as you keep trying to, you know, lose weight, It'll come together, you know, because I did it before. I did it before on a liquid diet, and I came down fast. But that weight came back on because I didn't have, like, a a daily, you know, I didn't have a regular workout routine, you know, daily. You know what I'm saying? You know, I used to wonder, you know, people be going to gym all the time, constantly. They... You know, it's like they're addicted to the gym. What are they doing? But basically, their, their bodies is probably just used to it. And it, it's keeping them fit. And it's keeping them looking the way they need to look, you know, for for whatever reason, for either their partner, their job, or the careers, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Now I know. That's the main thing is for their health, yeah. <laughs> that too. <sighs> so I always try to do some sit-ups for my midsection. And that's the... <clears throat> that's the main thing that be sticking out like I'm pregnant, <laughs> you know? So yesterday I showed supplements and all of that stuff and talk about eating salads. And then the day before that, um, I showed um, I showed some liquid diets with the chia seeds. So if y'all want to go back and look at those videos, y'all can. Today I'm showing you that the more equipment came in, the ad booster. So I'm not really waiting for other people to fund this war. You know, I'm 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 buying the tools. You know, <sighs> and test it out and see, cause um that air booster have a weight limit. I don't think it could be over two hundred twenty pounds. So I got to see if uh, if this thing gonna break on me after I put it together. <laughs> if it, I'm gonna sit on it and try to do one and it break pop. <sighs> Pop the metal. Uh, 
It's just a little box. So it doesn't seem like it take up that much space. It's one of those things that you could just fold up and put it in the closet. <clears throat> you know, when you finish with it, it doesn't take up space in your your house where it gotta be set up permanently there. <sighs> Today is going to be a long day for me because today I'm just basically trying to get this thing out the way. Some days it be like that. But that's what happens when you commit yourself to something, you know. You be like, I can't skip a day. I got to do it. As long as I'm feeling good. You know, healthy enough, and I'm not sick. I can't just not do my daily uh, workout just because I don't feel like it, you know? <sighs> yeah, but it's going to be a lot of stuff coming up. I can see that's going to... Oh, you see the belly popping up? I just looked down and seen the belly. Here's my t-shirt. My t-shirt. Hot dang. I got this, um... It's back brace. In the back brace. <laughs> got my shirt bunched up. So y'all probably seen my butt when I was planking. Was my butt out? Ugh. 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 Do it again. If you're not doing sit-ups right now, just try to bend a bend a knee. <laughs> Studying. I got studying all my mind. Ooh, <clears throat> that's a lot of reading and a lot of information. So I know that test gonna be crazy. Uh, 125 questions on a safe um, uh, MLO, the mortgage loan originator um, safe test. Cramming, doing the schooling in seven days. It's supposed to be only 20 hours, of, you know, a 20 hour course. <laughs> but you know how you gotta be reading things over like three and four times to get the comprehension. Like, you know, some things you could speed read through, mainly things that's like familiar to you, but some things that come new to you, new information. You be like, oh, what was that again? I gotta read that three and four times for my mind to remember, you know? <laughs> so, <sighs> that 20 hour class is leading to like 60 hours, <laughs> you know, 50 or 60 hours. <sighs> Could just lay down there and go to sleep. <sighs> Can't even tell you what's um, the latest in the news. I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> <sighs> I know they're trying to denounce Trump, trying to impeach him, but 
Other than that, I usually be on top of all kind of uh, hood news, hip hop news. But you know, when you have, when you take on important responsibilities in your life to learn new things or get new licenses to help you better yourself, then, you know, you don't have time for all that bull crap, you know? Focus on yourself. Because by the time you watch YouTube videos all day to see what everybody said about everybody and who's beefing with who, you know, your whole day is going by. And with me studying the way I'm studying for my mortgage license, it's just showing me, like, what I have to get done in one week. Oh, my phone, I can't answer it right now. Oh. I can't answer that phone right now. I gotta finish what I'm doing here. <clears throat> yeah, I got this phone. I do not disturb because um, in my earlier recordings, the the a call would be coming in, and even though I don't answer it um, while I'm recording, it loses audio. So I'll be talking, and it's not recording. It's recording video, but it it won't be recording audio. So what I do now is. Um, I was like, how am I going to solve that problem? So it was puzzling me for weeks. And then come to find out, it's basically do not disturb. You got to turn on the do not disturb on these iPhones. Turn on the do not disturb while you um recording. Else it might, you know, interrupt your audio <coughs> for the duration of your video. To me, I'm just trying to get through this hour. <clears throat> the rest of this week is going to be the hardest. At least today, tomorrow, what's today? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. These next three days, it's going to be the hardest day, so... I don't know when I'm gonna put the air booster together. <clears throat> but I guess, you know, I could use certain equipment and um and if it works for me and you about my size, then you know, you could decide that you're gonna get you one too. Or, you know, some people don't use equipment. They just do aerobics, you know. Some people don't use no kind of, like, machines or go to no gyms or nothing like that. They just got a whole, like, aerobic um, routine. Ah. Ah. <laughs> and, uh, but I try different equipment. Oh. But the punching bag, the heavy bag from Everlast and the gloves and all of this stuff is good, you know. Because, you know, that's not something that, you know, you you be, you know, it's like fun. It's, it's not tired, you know, like, oh, I don't want to do that no more, you know. And it's not hard to do. If you don't feel like punching no more, you just put your hands down. You know what I'm saying? Whew. 
And you could also, like, release uh, stress and frustration, you know, getting a heavy bag and some boxing gloves so that you don't go outside and have a real fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <sighs> oh, <clears throat> go to your heavy bag and punch on your heavy bag and avoid yourself from going to jail. <laughs> Yeah, I had to do a lot of turning the other cheek. I had so many people just pick on me like I'm a, some kind of square, like I never ran the streets. Like, when you get older, that's what be happening. People be testing you when you got kids and stuff, you know what I'm saying? But all the years I ran around in the street, I didn't have all that beef until I was bogged down with raising my child. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Keeping the roof over my child head where, you know, you got to fly straight, you know, because if you if you mess up, you know, you're messing up for your child too, you know what I'm saying? So, <sighs> I had to, like, really turn the other cheek a whole lot and hold my tongue and stuff like that because either I was going to say something messed up to the wrong nigga <laughs> and he was going to do something that hurt me and I can't be taking no beatings from no niggas. <laughs> so I was going to turn around and, you know, I would have to turn around and do something back, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I mean... What we do to each other in the, you know, black communities, the way we treat each other is crazy, you know. We can't even go to the store in peace, you know, without somebody mean mugging when you walk by and all kind of stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So instead of saying, like, well, what the hell are you looking at me like that for, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, or say the F word, you know, what the F you looking at me like that for, you know? For them to haul off and punch you in your face and knock you to the floor. And you can't beat a nigga. <laughs> a woman can't beat a, a, a nigga, so, uh, you know, she gonna have to go get some protection gun or whatever. And where you live at, you can't have beef where you, where you sleep, you know, with your neighbors, you know what I'm saying? So, a lot of times, A lot of things I had to walk through, you know, I had to, you know, hold tight, you know what I'm saying? Mainly that, that gang stuff, you know, I don't get involved. Like I said, don't mistake this red scarf for no bloods because it's not, you know what I'm saying? It's just a scarf that I bought at a, a, a um, when I had got my hair braided. The lady was selling scarves in her beauty salon and I bought one. Ooh, I don't think I could do any more today. But the bloods came and flooded the neighborhood. And, you know, when you don't get down with them or be interested in, in, in them, you know, it's like they be hating on you. Like, well, who the hell she thinks she is, you know? And she's stuck up about herself, you know. She don't want to be down with the rest of the people, you know what I'm saying? Like, no. <laughs> Everybody don't want to do that. Everybody don't want to mess up their background. Like right now, I'm taking the mortgage license. You know what I'm saying? Because my, my criminal, you can't have a felony. I'm a real estate broker. You can't have a felony. You know, a lot of things that you, opportunities that you could do in life um, will be eliminated once you, you know, get a, catch a felony. So there's no need to get involved with those gangs end up in jail doing a felony. When you come out, you can't be a real estate agent. You can't get uh, housing. You can't be a mortgage broker. You know, them things that you could take a quick test for, a uh, quick schooling and test for and hustle and, you know, earn your money, you know? <sighs> yeah. I'm gonna get off this floor. <laughs> I had it for today with this. Oh, 
these next couple of days it's not gonna be vigorous but I, I, I'm still feeling sweaty though know? <laughs> still feeling sweaty yeah, you gotta you gotta be careful that you know somebody who's already have a felony or who, whose background is messed up already, or somebody who already gave up on life, don't kick you off the street. You understand what I'm saying? You know, start stuff with you so that, you know, now you could be going to jail and handcuffed in the back of the cop car and getting a, a bid and, you know, leading you into, you know, joining the gangs for protection and all that stuff like that. I went to hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they really made me feel like I needed to go join the Crips. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I don't want to join no gang, you know? They really made me feel like I needed protection. <clears throat> but I just kept on going. Taking care of my household, taking care of raising my kids, my grandchild, doing what I have to do, walking through hell with a straight face, come in my house and close my door. And once I get in my house, you know, that's it. You know what I'm saying? And then to avoid trouble, if you know everybody's going to be outside, around, you know, when they wake up from 3 o'clock in the afternoon or 6 or, you know, at night at 10 or whatever, get up and take care of your business early in the morning, <laughs> you know, and, and stay out the way, you know what I'm saying? That's the best thing you can do. And I'm not only talking about women, I'm talking about dudes too. Stay out of the way. Stay out of the streets. Stay off the corners. You understand what I'm saying? You know something is going to happen. Niggas is smoking weed, drinking, and, you know, getting high, popping pills and stuff. Get out the way. You know? That's why it's good. God bless the child that has his own, you know? If you can't if you can't stay in your parents' house or whatever, go get you a room. Go get something that you could call your own. Go find your job. Go beg somebody for a job. Go give somebody some free work. That's a good gimmick. Offer them, you know... I work for free, and then go do such good work that they actually hire you permanently. And get get yourself together. And if the only thing you could do in life is get your own little place and have your own little peace of mind, and and you know, cause niggas hang out outside because uh, they don't have their own apartment. They living with people. So instead of, you know, so to stay out of their way, stay out of the people that they live with way, they only in there to sleep, you know, to have some place to sleep and shit and take a shit and use the bathroom because they don't have their own pot to piss in. So they stay out in the street all day, you know, to get out the house like if they, you know, they should be looking for a job, you know what I'm saying? So they stay out the way they could, they go out into the street. You know that because... What person that signs the lease would, you know, stand in front of their buildings and, and litter and loiter? Nobody who's signing the lease is really out there like that. <clears throat> you know? The people that's outside is the people that don't have their apartment yet. And, and once they do get their apartment, believe me, you can't come around their place you know, messing up. You know, once they get on their feet, you know, they'll probably be out there fighting with niggas for, for being in front of their property. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hanging out and loitering. You know. You wonder why, you know, niggas is hanging out because they're homeless, basically. They're not homeless, homeless whiz. They don't have a place to live. They homeless is they don't have their own lease. So 
they not showing no respect to the person that's allowing them to stay living in their house um, to re respect their grounds, you know? <laughs> you know, maybe that person is their mother. Maybe that person is their grandmother. Maybe that person is their girlfriend. Maybe that person is, you know, a baby mama. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you get your shit together. You know, you get your shit together. That's why I keep taking different licenses, tests, and different things like that. I keep keeping my background clean because, you know, I didn't give up in life yet. I'm still, I still have hope for the future, even though I'm already in my, in my 50s. When I see them old people that be living till 104 and 110, I be like, well, if I'm 50 and I'm going to live till 110, you know, who knows? Medicine might get so good where we be out here living for a longer time, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And imagine me giving up at 50 or 60 years old and being like, this is going to be my situation. I don't have to study. I don't have to get no more education. I don't have to reach for nothing no more. Uh, you know, imagine me giving up. So that's why, you know, I'm a real estate broker. And you can get these licenses and, you know, because you're a minority, you're, you're black or your credit is not good, you can't get the financing. You know, whereas a white person could walk into the bank and say, you know, I got a business, I got my license here. And they'd be like, yeah, here's $100,000, you know. <laughs> I go in there, they're going to be like, what's your credit? What's, your, what's the income to the thing? Well, now I need money in order to make this operation get going and start bringing in income, you know. They don't understand when a black person comes into the bank, but when a white person comes back, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what you got to do. You got to get that money first and get the whole setup together and stuff, and then you can get people working, and then the money's going to come back and turn around. You know what I'm saying? They understand the, the process when they're dealing with white people, but when they're dealing with black people, you know, minorities and stuff like that, you know, they, you know, have a great doubt, you know what I'm saying? They have a great doubt and be like, yeah, no, nah, you're not going to make it, you know? And it don't have to be somebody like a, a white person at the bank. It usually be like a black person, your own people that be looking at you like, you ain't getting no, no business loan. <clears throat> people looking down on you. So, you know, if you go into the bank and you think that the person that you get, you know, you get the, the black banker that comes, come sit down at my desk and, you know, start talking to you and stuff like that. And, you know, you'd be better off getting, you know, having one of them white um, bankers, you know, you know, representatives in the bank, you know, to help you with your application. Because they'll be probably probably giving you more positive insights and telling you, you know, what you need to do. Giving you the information that you need to be approved, you know? They're so hard on each other. You, th you would think that from slavery, black people would love each other and, you know you know, band together, help each other, but it's not like that. If you look at any black person that's successful or have a business or something like that, I guarantee you that it was somebody that white that they sat down and signed a contract that put them on, you know what I'm saying? Or... Just like when I used to do my cleaning business, like it's, it was always a white contractor, you know what I'm saying, that would, you know, give me the job, you know, you know. <laughs>
accept, you know, accepting you to uh, give me a chance uh, to do the job and um, sign a contract and stuff like that, you know? And sometimes if they like you, they keep you working from job to job to job to job to job. So if you do a good job, clean a job on one site, they'll, um, every, every site where they build and buildings or whatever they have work at, they'll, you know, let you know about what they got coming up. So I had like one or two contractors like that, you know, sometimes they used to bump heads and I didn't have enough crew, you know, for, for, you know, all the work, but... Anytime I came across a black contractor, like I came across a black contractor one time and, you know, he was telling me to put my bid in and do everything. So I did all my paperwork like I do for the white contractors, right? And he put me through all of that to start acting nasty with me and like, you ain't getting it, you know what I'm saying? But you told me to come and, you know, bring you, you know, give you a, a estimate and you know, work out an estimate, give you an estimate, and um, and bring you the contract so that we could, you know, get the deal signed. You know, so they'll they'll put you through the process, and then when you come and show them, you know, okay, here I got the paperwork, I figured out the estimate, this is what I want for the job to do the job, and you be lowballing the whole time, you know, because you you know what to do to lowball to be cheaper than all the other companies that's going to charge high prices. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you can't say my price was too much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just don't want to give me the job or maybe you found somebody else that you could give the job to. And instead of just, you know, saying you have somebody else, you know, they, they start acting nasty with you and acting like something so totally wrong with you, you know what I'm saying? Per they start acting personal with you, you know. Well, with the white contractors, they keep it professional. If they have somebody else that they um, gave the contract to, they let you know up front. Oh, we already um, signed a contract with another company. So you'd be like, oh, man. You know what I'm saying? But you keep on going to the next job. So you don't have to waste your time worrying about that job no more because you already know that you're not getting that one. It's already signed. You know, it's already a signed deal. So you might as well walk away. You wish you could have got it, but you didn't get it. And you know the contractor and you usually do work with him, but he signed with somebody else. Now you go to a black guy. If a black guy is running the, um, the, the job, the construction job, and you... And he'll put you through all of the paperwork, you know, for you to come to the table. And he act like, you know, he never invited you there. <laughs> it just be, you know, they just turn retarded on you, you know. They don't, you know, it's, it's a lack of professionalism, you know what I'm saying. And when it come down to your own people, you know, you don't want to give them nothing. You don't want to see them grow. You want to, you don't want them to have anything to stand on. You don't want to see them get bigger than you. You don't want to give them an opportunity to, you know what I'm saying, grow in life. Oh, if I give her this job, then she might, you know, uh, end up with five or $10,000, you know, profit in her pocket after she paid her workers. And she might have some, some money to, you know, start, you know, Investing more in her business and growing more, you know what I'm saying? Whereas, if you're dealing with somebody white, they want you to do that. They want you to, you know, okay, I'm going to give you the contract and stuff like that. So when you get the contract, like when I got my first contract, I just had like buckets, mops, rags, and soap. <laughs> And I go in there and clean up, you know, and mop and sweep and mop. And then I start coming across uh, tile floors that, you know, the apartment floors is all scratched up. So now they need somebody to come in and strip the floors down and, you know, get the scratch marks out the floor. So I, I started renting floor machines. And then um, 
when I seen I did jobs where I had profit, then I turn around and buy the floor machines. Why should I just keep renting and renting and renting? I could just have the machines anytime I need a machine. I got a few machines in my um, in my house, you know. So I started buying my equipment, you know. You know, that's the thing you have to do. You start out small. And then you start adding to your equipment, you know, when it comes down to business. And then when one person see you doing that, everybody and their mama want to be a cleaning business. You know what I'm saying? So, like when I was doing the cleaning business, everybody running around giving the um, bids and stuff, you know, running behind you, competing with you and stuff. So you got to step up to where they can come to. You know, mainly if they have a criminal background. You have to do things that, well, you're not going to be able to become a real estate agent or a broker because you have a felony. You're not going to be able to become a a, a mortgage uh, originator because, you know, you can't have a felony. You know what I'm saying? That's when you start leaving niggas behind. That's when you start leaving niggas behind. Because, you know, when it comes down to the cleaning business, any bum off the street could, you know, clean. And, you know, even if they don't have a bucket and a uh, in, in the rag, you know, the contractor give them $20 to go to the 99 cent store and get a bucket and a mop and a rag and clean. It doesn't, it's not a big investment. So any bum, you know, I had came to the, to the end of my um, road with the cleaning, right? I went to one cleaning site, like I used to do like post construction, so I went to one cleaning site, right? And I knew I knew I was at the end of my road with this, you know, business right here because, you know, a lot of people, you know, thought that I was getting rich off a of cleaning business because I had opened up a storefront, right? And um so when they seen this, I opened up the big dustbusters at storefront. So when they seen that, they thought, oh, she getting rich. You know what I'm saying? I was broken and broke, broken than them. You know what I'm saying? You know, with an overhead. You know what I'm saying? So um, I went to this site uh, to bid on, you know, the cleaning. Like, I used to do post-construction. So after they finished the construction, I go in there and clean up so that, you know, people can move in the apartments, you know. So I give it like a final, like a final cleanup from all the contractors that been in there. And so I went to this contractor and, you know, it wasn't a big, big job. It was like a stretch of houses, you know, a little something of, you know, going in and get, you know, have something to do, be busy and, you know, get a couple of dollars, you know. So he said, okay, so how much um, how much you want to charge me um, for each apartment to clean? So I said, $100, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, with those apartments, you got to clean up everything, and you got to clean the windows. You might have to take the windows out and clean both sides and scrape them from all the paint and plaster and stuff that the construction, because it's construction workers that you're cleaning behind, so it's a little bit heavier than your your regular household cleaning, you know. So I said a hundred dollars. So he said, well, a couple of girls just came by here and said that they would do it for 40. I said, well, do they have a uh, business insurance? Because how are they gonna do it for 40? You know what I'm saying? Like, first of all, uh, you want your business to have insurance, liability, and workers' comp just in case, you know, you get hurt or one of your workers get hurt. You know what I'm saying? And then you got to buy your supplies and stuff like that. You know, you're going to use in each apartment, you know, 10 or $20 worth of, you know, equipment in there. You know what I'm saying? Because when I use my, my soap and stuff, you know, I use it freely, you know. When I use, you know, my equipment and stuff like that, I don't, you know, I don't pinch, you know. Whatever it takes, you know, I use it freely. So, like, it takes two people to go in an apartment and clean. Like, one person got to go in that bathroom and clean the bathroom, and it be nasty. 
It be shitty from a construction worker shitting in the toilet and in the tub. And it, the, the floors on the towel floors, you got to get on your hands and knees and scrape all the paint specks and everything. It just be crazy. Sometimes you have to pour acid on the bathroom floor towels to, you know, for that stuff to pop up and, you know, clean up. So I'm just like wondering, you know, people is coming by the job and offering to clean up an apartment, not for $50, but for $40. <laughs> I said, that's it. I'm out of the business. I thought I was undercutting other people that was charging $200 apartment. I thought my $100, you know, charging them $100 was, you know, real, real low, you know, and I was overworking myself and my workers just, you know, to land those jobs. Because <coughs> I just take in charge of my $100, I do the whole apartment, the windows and everything. Some contractors go in there, you know, cleaning uh, businesses, they go in there and they charge them separate for the apartment, separate for the windows, separate for the, oh, the bathroom is too, you know, they get real nitpicky and stuff. So it's too much competition for me to be like that, you know what I'm saying? It's too much, you know, underbidden, you know? But I guess at $40 an apartment, they're not, he wasn't requiring them to come with no paperwork. Because I was like, well, what about, um, they got insurance, business insurance? He said, I don't care about that. So I said, okay. See, some contractors is like that, and, you know, where you could just come in there and they'll take the chance with, you know, people come working on their sites without business insurance. But, you know, you need to, as a business, uh, have business insurance to protect, you know, your, your business and your workers. But just in case somebody get hurt on a job. Even with the the mortgage um, uh, loan originators, we have to be bonded. So, you know, with the bonded, with, with the bonding, an application has to go in. So, obviously, they probably going to check my credit, my background, you know, my criminal background before they give me the bond, you know? Because the higher you go up, you become a mortgage originator, then you become a mortgage broker to a banker. You gotta have like $250,000. You know, you have to have a net worth once you become the banker, you know what I'm saying? So I'm starting at the bottom. And you know, this is what I'm studying for, you know? When everybody else is acting like they rich already, like, I'm still poor, you know. I'm nowhere near a billion dollars, you know. I'm nowhere near a multi-million, you know. But can I get to a million? I think I can. And if I pass this, um, this test, this uh, mortgage originators uh, domain uh, safe test, I think um, with the mortgage license and the broker's license together, you know, I think I could. My granddaughter said, um, with this school, are you going to be rich? <laughs> are you trying to get rich? I said, yeah, I'm trying to get rich, but, you know, if it just helped me with a, you know, with a good income, I'm good with that too, you know? You know, some people is like criticizing people with jobs and stuff like that, but you know, when you're self-employed, you have to make the money come in. And that's a hard thing to do. You know, when you are working for somebody, you're expecting your check every week, or whenever they say, if it's a, every two weeks, like those city jobs and stuff like that, you get paid every two weeks, you get your check. You don't have to worry about building the foundation for the business, buying the supplies, paying the overhead, doing the paperwork, finding the contracts and, and getting a contract. You know what I'm saying? Or trying to find funding and, you know. So it's nothing wrong with having your own business and trying to get it off the ground. But if you also have a job, hold on to your job to help 
support, you know, uh, putting that money into growing your business. You know what I'm saying? And getting the supplies and the equipment, the things that you need for your business. You know? Because I'm, I'm already a, a real estate broker. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, why am I not where I need to be already? I thought with this broker's license, I would be at the, the top already. But I done had my broker's license since 2011. So I'm like, what's up? You know? So I'm lacking in some department. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you be knowing. You be knowing what you're lacking in and what you need to be doing, but you just don't want to buckle down and do it. So, basically, because it's hard, it's hard for a lot of people, you know, and, you know, you just going to take it on upon yourself that it's hard for you, too, that you can't stay disciplined and get it, you know what I'm saying? So, you're just going to be, like, average like everybody else. I said, let me just go ahead and do it. Because I be telling, I told my sister, other people, I'll tell, go take the mortgage thing. Because the mortgage thing is, 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 you know, I heard that, that that's good. A lot of people are choosing to be mortgage brokers over um, real estate agents and stuff and brokers. You know, they'd rather, they'd rather be in the mortgage business. You know, a lot of people that get into the mortgage be happy with it, you know. Some, you know, get rich and have workers underneath them. And some of them just, you know, work and you can work from home. And they earn their income and, you know, they in a decent, um, living in a decent neighborhood and, and, and satisfied with that, you know. You could get to a point where you're satisfied, like, you don't need that much in life. Like, well, I'm not asking to be... A multi-millionaire. I'm just asking to live decent, and I'm at. Um, I need to, you know, get in a, you know, at least a middle-class neighborhood or upper middle-class neighborhood where you know, I don't have to be looking over my shoulders all the time. I mean, I'm gonna watch my back all the time, but you know, dang, you know, you know, every time you go outside, you gotta pray. You know, please let me make it back home safe. You know. Please don't let the guy that, that got the big dog, or, or the big rat wilder, please don't let him be in the hallway when I get out there. You know, like, you don't want to bump into trouble, you know. Every time, because I'm scared of dogs, so every time I bump into the people that got dogs, you know, I back off, you know. And then they get personally offended, like, you know, if I'm dissing them. But it's not that. I just got a phobia for dogs, you know. But people, dogs is like they family members. So if you treat their dog like that, they taking it personal too. And they be having beef with you because you don't like dogs, you know. It's be crazy out there. You know? But Jay-Z was kind of right when he said, you know, in a project, y'all living on top of each other. There's somebody on this side of you, somebody on that side of you, somebody under you and somebody over you. You know, you can't even take a shit in peace. You know what I'm saying? When you're shitting in the toilet, you feel like somebody's listening to you or smelling your shit. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, if you get into, like, your music or you're making music or, you know, you're writing a song or you're rehearsing or something like that, you think, like, people's in the hallway, like, listening to your, you know, your creations and stuff and, you know, stealing your creations and stuff, you know? Or, you know... Like with me, I make, you know, when I play in my studio and I make some beats and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I want to stay up all night to the break of dawn with my with the music, you know, loud. So, yeah, this, this beat is coming out okay and stuff. But, you know, if you got neighbors and they might be asleep 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning, you got to cut that shit down, you know? But I'm not saying living in tenement buildings and living in projects, you know, you can't be satisfied because if, you know, you're not looking to, you know, play loud music or be hanging out in the street and stuff and you mind your business and you come in your house and you do what you got to do for your family and you take it. You could go into some people's house uh, apartments and the projects and stuff and you wouldn't even believe in the projects because, you know, some people decorate nice and buy the best of furniture and stuff because they rent it a lot. 
They got nice cars outside. Everybody got nice cars and stuff outside. You know what I'm saying? You would think, you know, oh, they live in the projects. They ain't got no cars. They got nice um, trucks outside. A lot of people got, everybody got a uh, truck, you know? <laughs> think not? So a lot of people be like throwing furniture away and buying new furniture. They're not rocking. So yeah, we we reached our hour. I'm just babbling. Don't mind me, cause I'm just trying to get past the uh, past the word. What's today? Twenty three. Day twenty three. Okay, so what you call it? Like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. And peace every week, champs. So keep at it and watch your diet. Don't mess up your workout by eating too much. Okay? Peace.